In this video, we're going to look at the volume of 3D shapes. The volume is simply the amount of space trapped inside the shape. In this particular video, we're going to focus on prisms. A prism is a 3D shape with a constant cross-section. An example could be now a Toblerone box. We have a constant cross-section, which is a triangle, and then we have its length. So wherever I cut this right way through, I'm going to have a triangle on the end. A stick of rock is another example. We've got a circle on the end and we can cut it down anywhere and we will still have that constant cross section. In the front of the exam papers, it tells you how to find the volume of a prism. You find the area of the cross section and you multiply it by the length. So for example, now if we knew that the area of this, let's just put this on, let's uh, grab a value up, Let's say we were told that this was going to be 10 centimetres squared. We would simply multiply that by the length here. And let's say that that was going to be now 15 centimetres. We'd have 10 by 15. So we could say the volume or the space trapped inside our table own box was going to be 10 multiplied by 15. And that's going to give me 150 and the units will be centimetres cubed. If we've got an area multiplied by a length, we're going to have a volume. If you want to think of this now in terms of getting the correct units, as we looked at in the video on area, if we have a length, we would have, if we were dealing with centimetres, centimetres to the power of one. We don't write the one, but this essentially is centimetres to a power one. It's a one dimensional shape. If I had now a rectangle, we would measure the area, as we can see here, in centimetres squared. So if the units were centimetres, we'd have area is centimetres squared. This is a 2D shape. If finally I have a volume, and let's put on now a 3D shape. If I do a volume, let's do that, and I'll just draw a quick sketch. And we, again, we're dealing with centimetres. I'll just draw a prism. And we have something that looks like that. We could say now that the volume was going to be centimetres cubed. So if you want to remember it based on the dimensions, a length will always be in centimetres or metres, kilometres, millimetres. The area will be centimetres squared, kilometres squared, metres squared, etc., etc., And the volume will be cubed. Okay, so this is an example of a prism. So let's go ahead and find the volume of some shapes. This is a cube. Now, what you could do with this is simply multiply all of the numbers. Five times by five times by five is going to give you the volume of this particular cube. In the formula book, it tells us to find the area of a cross section. Now, if we think about it, this could be a cross section. The area of that cross section is going to be now five multiplied by five. That would give me now 25. All I would do is simply now multiply the 25 by the length. So we'd have 25 multiplied by this length right here. And that is going to give me 125 and the units are centimeters cubed. So all I've done here, and I'll just draw this on, I found the area of the cross section which is this square, and I've multiplied it now by the length. So that's what we end up with, and that will give us now the volume. I could have done this one and multiplied it by that. It's entirely up to you. So every cross section multiplied by the length. This is a cuboid. So let's go ahead and find the area of the cross section. Again, with this one, we could simply multiply all of the lengths. The area of this cross section is going to now be 10 by 12. So 10 by 12 will be equal to 120. All I'm going to do now is multiply that by the length. So we'll have 120 multiplied by three, and this will give me 360. And again, we're working with centimeters, so it'd be centimeters cubed. If we were working with meters, it would be 360 cubed meters or meters cubed. All I've done here is found the area of the cross section and multiplied it by the length. 
So let's just go ahead and do that, and that's what we have. Alternatively, you could just simply multiply the three numbers. We've now got a triangle. So on the end, we got a triangle, and we've got, as a result, a triangular prism. Students often make a huge mistake here. They find the area of this one here and multiply it by the length, or they forget to half their answer. So let's look at two different ways that we could attack this. What I'm going to do to begin with is find the area of the cross section. The cross section is going to be this part right here. This is a triangle with a base of three and a height of eight. Therefore, I know that the area of the triangle, which we've seen in the previous video, is going to be three multiplied by eight and I need to half my answer. So we can say that the area is going to be 12 and that will be centimetres squared. I now need to multiply 12 by the length, and 12 multiplied by 12 is going to give me 144, and that will be centimetres cubed. So what I've done here is found the area of the cross section and multiplied it by the length. You can, of course, half your answer at the end. So if I just put this on, uh, let's, in fact, we'll do it with a... Uh, a different colour, make it easier with a line. Let's do that. What I've done is found the area of this constant cross section and I've gone ahead and then multiplied that by the length, which is 12. What you can do is 8 times by 3 times by 12 and then half your answer. But remember, we haven't got now a cuboid. We have half a cuboid. A cuboid would look something, let's do that. It would look something like that. So if I just drop that down. That's a cuboid. So if you don't half your answer, you end up getting the same shape that we'd have here. So make sure whichever way around, you're going to half that answer. So eight times by three is 24. Half the answer gives us the area of the cross section, multiply it by the length. Okay, this time we've got a cylinder. A cylinder is a prism and we have a circle on the end. So what I'm going to do is find the area of the circle and multiply it by the length. We can see the diameter is eight, which means the radius of the circle is going to be four. Again, this one is in centimeters. They won't always be in centimeters. These examples have just been all given in centimeters. So what we're going to do is find the area of the cross section. So the area is equal to pi r squared. So the area is going to be equal to pi, which is just a number, it's 3.142 multiplied now by four squared, which is 16. So four squared, four times by four is 16. So we can say that the area of the end is going to be 16 pi. This will give us an exact value on the calculator. So all I'm going to do then is 16 pi multiplied now by the length of 30. So let's go ahead and do that on the calculator. So I can type in 16 shift pi you can do 3.142, then we're going to multiply this answer by 30, and that gives me 480 pi, and that's 1507, so let's write this on, 1507, dot, 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 let's just see what it was, 1507, So I'm going to say, now I'm just going to round this to the nearest whole number, and I'm going to say this is 1508, and that is going to be centimetres cubed. Don't be alarmed that it's a large number. We can see clearly we've done the correct calculation. This is going to have a lot of space trapped inside. When we're talking about a lot of space, just think of a can of Coke, just how much is going to come out of that if you empty it. So we found the area of the end, 4 squared times by pi, and then multiplied that by the length. As you can see here, uh, with the cylinder, we've got another prism. So nice and straightforward and fairly logical. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Right, okay, so let's look at this here. What we've got then is essentially a composite shape or a compound shape on the end. So we've got one centimeter, we've got one centimeter, one centimeter, and uh, one centimeter, one centimeter, two and two. So what we can do is find, and you can do this however you like. If you want, you could find the whole square and multiply it by the length and then subtract away this small part or you could split this up. 
I'm going to go ahead and simply find what the volume would be if we had the entire shape and didn't have this cut out. So what we'd have, and I'll just quickly sketch it up, we'd have a square on the end. So we'd have a square, two by two square, and then we would have now a 15 centimetre part. So it looks something like this. Let's just go ahead and do that. So let's put that on. Something, I mean, this is not massively accurate. So what I'm going to do is that. So what we'd have here, let's just put this on. This is going to be two. So we've got two and two. So the area of this is going to be four. We've got a length of 15, so that's 15 centimetres. So four times by 15 is going to give me now 60, and that will be centimetres cubed. What I'm now going to do is subtract away this part. So let's do that. Let's subtract away that part. Let's just draw that up a little one. So what we've got then is now the one by one. So let's put that on, and I'll just draw a quick sketch here. So it's not massively accurate, but it'll give us some idea of what's going on. So all I'm going to do is take away now this one by one. What you could say is you've actually just got three quarters of this, entirely up to you, as long as you're showing full workings. So this is going to be a one by one. So it's one by one. So the area is going to be equal to one. And this length is 15. So it's one times by 15, which is going to give us 15 centimetres cubed. So we can say that the volume, and I'm going to call that V, will be 60 minus 15, which is going to give us 45, and that's going to be centimetres cubed. So that's one way of doing it. Um, if you're very uh, slick with that, you can just say it's three quarters of this particular shape, as we can see that it's cut up. Alternatively, what we could have done is done now the area of this particular cuboid, just here. So we've got a two by one by 15, and then this one right here, which is going to give us a one by one by 15. So you could have looked at it in many different ways. Could have gone across here as well. So all I've said then, if this is going to be one, so let's put that there, that's going to be one, this length right here. This one is for two. Then what we've got here is a one, and we know that this one is going to be one as well. So all I'm doing is adding two volumes together. Okay, um, let's look at this one. This is a trapezium. So on the end of this particular one, we've got a trapezium. In the front of the formula book of the exam, we're told that the area of a trapezium is going to be A plus B divided by 2 multiplied by the height. All this is telling me is to add the two parallel sides. So if we look at this, we could just look at that constant cross section. It would be 15 plus the 20. So we've got now these two. These are the parallel sides. So if I put that on. That one is parallel and that one here. These two are the parallel sides. We divide this answer by two and we multiply it now by the height, which is going to be three. So if I look at that, that's going to give me 35 over two multiplied by three. So we've got 17 and a half multiplied by three, which looks to be 50, let's, uh, let's say that's 53.5 and that'll be centimeters squared. So let's just check that, just check my maths isn't going completely nuts. So what we'll do is 15 plus the 20, we will divide this by two, and then we will multiply the answer by three, and that gives me 50, uh, 52 and a half. So good job I was, uh, there we go, 52 and a half. Let's do the proper maths, uh, 52 and a half, that makes sense. Okay, so that is the area of the cross section. So what I've done is just found the area of this bit. So that's that part. Now all I need to do is go ahead and multiply this by the length. So we'll say now that the volume is going to be 52.5 multiplied by 30. So all I'm going to do is multiply my answer now. So multiply by 30 and we get 1575. So we can say 1575 and again this will be centimetres cubed. So that's that's what we have. Um, that's quite a nice one as well, but all of these are prisms. Constant cross-section multiplied by the length. Okay, uh, this one right here. So we've got another triangular prism. So constant cross-section of a triangle, and we've, be, we've been given the volume now, and we need to find a missing length x. So let's just think about this. We need the area. So the volume is going to be equal to the area of the cross-section 
multiplied by the length. So we can say that 42 will be equal to this area. Now just be careful with this area. It's going to be 1 times by the 1.5 divided by 2. It's a triangle. So that is going to give me now a half of 1.5 uh, is 0 0.75. So 0 0.75 multiplied now by the length, and the length is x. So what we can say then, now dividing both sides by the 0 0.75, 42 divided by 0 0.75 is going to be equal to x. So I've just gone ahead and done that. And what's that going to give me? 56. Let's just, knowing how poor my maths has been, let's, uh, let's just do that. I think it should be 56. 56. There we go. So x is going to be equal to 56. So as we can see, that's not remotely, uh, remotely to scale. Uh, but it gives us an idea of how we can do it. So 56, and that's going to be meters. Uh, so that's what we got. So x is going, or x is just going to be 56 as we've got the meters there. So all I've done is work this one backwards. Okay, let's just uh, finish with another one. Sometimes, and I'll, I'll just draw this out, sometimes we might get given some shape and told that this forms a prism. So let's just see if I can. Uh, that doesn't look brilliant, but it'll give us some idea. And then we've got something that looks like this. So we've got some, we've got some prism, um, and it's, it's a constant cross-section. Now we might be told that the area of this is going to be, let's say, 42, and we'll say millimetres squared, and we'll be told now that the length of this is just going to, let's make this 10, let's make this 10 millimetres. All we would do in this particular case, if we were already given the area, we could say that the volume is going to be equal to 42 multiplied by the 10, which is going to give us 420, and that will be millimetres cubed. So you don't always have to find the area. Sometimes you'll be given it, because finding the area of shape is going to be a bit of a, a hassle. Just simply take the information that you're given for the area and multiply it by the length. So there we go, um, the volume of 3D shapes, we find the area of the constant cross-section of the prism and multiply it by the length. There will be videos on, for example, cones, pyramids and spheres, but for now we've just looked at prisms.